Blog Talk Radio. Hello everyone, this is Chris M, and I'd like to welcome you to a conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Uh, today, or actually tonight, where I am, I'm calling uh, you, I'm talking with you from Lourdes, France, where it's about 11 o'clock p.m., and I don't think uh, Centara is going to make it except for another hour because uh, I don't, I'm not sure she's remembering the time change, you know, fall back and spring forward. And so um, we'll probably hear from her in about an hour. Anyway, I'm here to talk with you about Lord's Friends and about the uh, the healing waters and the, uh, the um, you know, the whole uh, scenario around Lord's Friends. And, but first... I would like to welcome you to this to this uh, Blog Talk Radio, and I'd like to let you know where where you can find some more information about your Kundalini Awakening process. And one of those is on YouTube. And if you go to YouTube and you and you put into the search engine Chrisum Kundalini, uh, it'll bring up uh, many 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 of the videos. There's a there's a little over 270 I think videos there. And uh, this will give you a, a a level of information that you, that you can't find anywhere else, really. Um, uh, it's uh, it's a fairly extensive uh, video library of information. Now, I'm going to give you the guest call in number right off the bat here because with this iPad, I'm unable to set up a chat room. So for all of all of you that would normally join me in the chat room. I do apologize for that. Uh, Santara has a laptop, but once again, she's probably not going to show up for another hour. So my apologies to those uh, who who would normally uh, uh, join us in the chat room. One can also go to Kundalini Awakening Systems, the number one dot com, and and there you'll find a, a beautiful website set up by Glenn Ola. So. Uh, many thanks uh, to Glenn. I'm going to bring Eileen on here just for a sound check. Hi, Eileen. Hi, Chris. Um, the sound is wonderful. So oh, far. my gosh. You know, I'm, I'm in this 1930s, 1940s old hotel here in Lourdes, and they actually have uh, the Art Deco old phone booth type scenario. Because oh, the wow. night. Yeah, the night guy is listening to his soccer game, and so I'm I'm in this cramped little phone booth in a chair, and uh, it's well, perfect perfect for doing the, the show. So thank is, you. The sound is great. Keep going. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And I'll bring that over here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so many thanks to Glenn Ola for putting that uh, website together. Um, you can also go to uh, Chris Mitchell or Chrisum Kundalini on Facebook, and of course we have the Yahoo uh, groups Kundalini Awakening Systems One uh, at yahoogroups.com. Uh, Lord's France is, is quite unique. Um, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and give you a, a thumbnail sketch of Saint Bernadette Subaru. Uh, who, who is the person uh, that had many of these experiences that caused Lourdes to become this huge, huge uh, 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 travel destination, uh, especially uh, within the Catholic faith. And I, and I need to, to say right off the bat... Um, Anybody who is a practicing Catholic, I apologize in advance if I say anything that offends you. It's just that, uh, you know, I don't buy into, you know, a lot of the aspects of the uh, of, of that belief system. Uh, uh, not that it's wrong. It's just that I, I and my Kundalini, it just isn't. Uh, it's not correct. Um, hang on a second here. There we are. So. My apologies if, if anything I say uh, offends anybody else. So, 
Let's begin. Uh, Bernadette Subaru, back in the 1850s and early 1860s, uh, when she was 14 year old, was out. Uh, uh, they were collecting firewood. Uh, one one girl was her sister, and another was a, a friend of the family. They were out collecting firewood, and uh, I guess they spread apart in the forest. And Bernadette uh, came upon this grotto that that I'm sure everybody knew was there, but but uh, just didn't think much of it. And when she came to the grotto looking for firewood, uh, an apparition appeared in front of her. And this apparition was of a female uh, that was covered in light, or she was luminescent. And this female told, verbally told uh, uh, St. Bernadette that she was the in immaculate conception. Now, what really needs to be understood is that she wasn't. She didn't say she was the Virgin Mary. She didn't say she was Mary, Mother of Christ. She said she was the uh, the the Immaculate Conception. And of course, you know it's an easy jump uh, to to get into the to the to the idea that oh, this must be the 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 Virgin Mary. Uh, and and this is what is currently. Um, uh, understood here as you as you come to Lord's friends, and it it is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful expression of Christian uh, uh, um, of the Christian belief system uh, to finally uh, find a way to to honor the sacred feminine in everyone. Okay, I got disconnected here, and, and uh, hello, hello everyone, I got disconnected here, my apologies, um, uh, I'm, I'm sure, uh, let's see if Eileen can tell me where I left off, hi Eileen. Hi, you were just talking about uh, uh, the assumption that it was the Virgin Mary. Oh, thank you, thank you my dear, and I'll, I'll pick it up from there, thank you again, and, and right. uh, please... Please uh, uh, stay on the phone line here in case I get disconnected again, okay? Okay, I will. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, I got disconnected for whatever reason here in the hotel. Uh, maybe the guy turned the, well, whatever it is. So anyway, so the assumption is is made that it's the Virgin Mary, and and this is a great way to... You know, for the for for many of the Christians in the in the Catholic uh, world, to find a way to honor the sacred feminine. Uh, the the apparition came to Saint Bernadette eighteen times on eighteen different days, and uh, created quite a stir in the in 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 the Lord's village at the time. And one of the things that the that the uh, apparition started to tell Bernadette. Uh, I don't have any apparitional quotes here, but uh, the the apparition wanted to test Bernadette's faith in what she was experiencing, and and so levels of surrender testing uh, seem to have been developed. And by surrender testing, I mean the apparition would say to Saint Bernadette, "Oh, do this or do that," and and uh, whether or not Saint Bernadette would do this or that would determine her level of surrender to the to the apparition. Now let's talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, this <laughs> uh, apparitions, you know, can be many different things. Now this happened to be a, a a divine apparition, and you can feel it when you're here. But I wouldn't want anybody to start hearing voices or to see a vision of somebody in a grotto and start to uh you know to to hold that apparition or that voice as as a god or a goddess or in some way in control of you uh be very 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 careful about how you approach this type of thing however with bernadette uh the the apparition gave her certain tests to do and one of the tests was to eat grass uh and and uh and so Bernadette went out into the meadow and started eating grass like a cow. 
the villagers saw her doing this, and this upset them greatly. And uh, and she, be, you know, their ridicule began to happen about about why Bernadette was doing this, and you know, if this was a if this was a, a holy apparition, why would it have her eating grass like a cow? And then the apparition. Uh, commanded her to do, you know, something even worse in the eyes of the villagers, which was to drink muddy water out of a mud puddle. Uh, and, and uh, of course, you know, Bernadette went over and she drank the muddy water out of the mud puddle. And, and this really incensed the villagers. But uh, as, as, uh, as the apparitional visitations continued, uh, an understanding was beginning to develop within the village, but mostly with, with the village priest, because the apparition told uh, Bernadette to to have a church built over the site of this grotto, and and this grotto contained a spring, and these and the healing waters uh, became connected to to what the apparition said would be. Uh, would be a, a healing center or, you know, a, a great healing gift. Um, and so this is this has been what has been occurring here in Lord's France. And coming here as a Kundalini awakened person, you can really feel the energy. The energy is very, very strong here. And and within that context, this this divinity, this divine force that that is actually here, is is blessing everyone who comes here. They're saying, you know, many many people are saying, oh, the age of miracles has passed, and and um, uh, there there are no more miracles, and and of course I, I have mentioned in previous shows that that's absolutely silly. It's just that. You know, we have, in our Western society, we have preconceptions of what we think a miracle should be. You know, in my opinion, a, a miracle can be a, a child being resuscitated from, from an accidental potential drowning. But, of course, you know, that's just not miracle enough because it happens too much. But it, because it happens so much, I'm suggesting that miracles are still happening and will continue to happen, especially to Kundalini awakening people. And so I want you to, to fasten your seatbelts because, you know, with Kundalini awakening, you get miracles. You get miracles in real time. You want apparitions? Well, all you have to do is look, and they will come. Uh, but once again, you know, I'm, 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 not, <laughs> I'm not suggesting that anybody uh, start going out calling into the into the void or the ether for a, an apparition to come to them and appear because typically you'll just get a discarnate entity that wants to control your life in some way. Uh, when you come to Lord, uh, you immediately feel the sacred quality, and a lot of this is given off by the people that are there. Uh, as Magdalene de Deus and I arrived, uh, we arrived at the Excelsior Hotel, which is Really, uh, gosh, if you're going to come, come to the Excelsior because it's it's the last hotel before you get to the uh, to the shrine, and uh, and so you you literally park your car in the garage there and then you walk to the grotto. So uh, if you're if any of you are planning on visiting Lords, I would suggest you to come. To the, the night guy likes to watch his his soccer, but hey, you know they like soccer here. Anyway, so uh, as you come and as you begin to involve yourself in the activities that are done here, you begin to feel levels of kundalini, and it will affect your kundalini in very, very real strong ways. You'll have pulsations of energy coming up your spine. Your heart will begin to expand. You may get a bit of a, of a head buzz, which is what I was getting when I, got, when I, when I first came here and and that, you know, that will subside a little bit. Uh, ecstasy and bliss are easy to come by here. You begin to cry for no reason. And a lot of it is, is, uh, is um, detox that's coming, that's coming, uh, coming through the Kundalini for you. But uh, you'll, you, you may have the opportunity to join a, a, a great uh, uh, throng of people who, who walk around a, it looks like about a, maybe a kilometer and a half uh, semicircle, 
from the chapel that has indeed been built above the uh, the spring, above the grotto. And you walk around this wide boulevard and come back around and meet at the chapel, or I'm sorry, at the grotto. And there they do a, a, a big sermon in four different languages at the grotto. So uh, I, I stood through the sermon for a little while just to, to, to see the level of entity interaction with people. Uh, very interesting, very interesting. A lot of goodness is happening here. A lot of love is happening here. And yes, there are healings that are happening here. Uh, I would like to welcome everybody who's calling in. Once again, I apologize for not being able to set up a uh, a, uh, a chat group. Let me Let me see if I can come on over here to where Amelia might be. Let's see here. And there she is. And, and, uh, and, um, let me see if I can get her on. Okay, we'll see if we can get her on here. Okay, so, so yeah, uh, when you when you come here when you when you join in these festivities and they are very festive they're very positive extremely positive and and yes healings do occur however you do see a lot of healings that do not occur you see healings that are i was sitting next to a gentleman today uh uh who who was who who wanted to have a healing for um for a crippled leg, he, was, he you know he had a very hard time walking, and of course, you know my Kundalini went to him immediately and started to work on him. But uh, you know he he came in, and it, it doesn't happen for everyone. It uh, but it does happen for some, and uh, this is the second time I've been here, and it is extremely conducive to Kundalini awakening people. It is. It is a wonderful place to come, and I do recommend that you come to Lourdes, France, not so much on a Catholic pil pilgrimage, but certainly within a Kundalini uh, type of pilgrimage. Uh, I have been here in France uh, for about, uh, well, just a few days, and putting together quite a few videos uh, from, from Ireland and also from France, and um, um uh, Lourdes is exceptional. Lourdes is an exceptional place. Now, of course, we have the Catholic hierarchy, you know, asserting their control over basically everything here. It's interesting because there's this big patriarchal, uh, uh, patriarchal control group uh, trying to once again dominate femininity. And femininity really is the source of the force that comes through Lourdes here. It's a very, very feminine place. It is all about uh, Mother Mary or the Virgin Mary, and I'm fine with that. It, it, is, it, is a, it is a sacred grace that people are partaking of, and, and uh, for Kundalini people, you get to feel it really strongly. Mayor, uh, Magdalene de Deus, she felt it uh, in her heart. Let's see. Hi, Santara. Hello. Uh, Santara, I can't hear you. Well, okay. Can you set Hello, up a chat? Hello, Chris. Hi, hi, Chris. Can you, hi. Can you set up a chat group, please, with your laptop? Yes, I can. Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, and so, so as you, as you, from a Kundalini uh, perspective. Uh, there is equanimity between the genders, between sacred male and sacred female. And here I see in Lourdes uh, a gentle, soft, and provocative attempt uh, by, the, uh, by the sacred divine to begin to adjust uh, a large group of Christianity towards an appreciation of sacred divinity. Um, so this is, this is, you feel this a lot here, and of course, you have the men placing themselves over and above uh, the divine here. You know, you have the, 
the the popes being placed over and above the divine and and you have the uh you know certain male sin almost all of them are men uh you know being placed over the what I'm going to call the apparition or the the immaculate conception which I really see as sacred femininity or you know in the sanskrit terminology shakti kundalini and uh, you know as as this occurs it's okay it's all right because divinity doesn't really have a competitive nature in this way but it is beginning to open doors for people who uh, who have this level of appreciation. Um, many, many people were, were here uh, last night. I, I would have to say over a thousand people were here marching around uh, saying prayers to, to, um, to the Virgin Mary, saying Hail Marys and, you know, Hail Mary full of grace and all of, all of these wonderful, wonderful prayers to, to the sacred feminine. Uh, as you come up to the grotto you can you can actually tour the grotto and you can see the actual spring itself. Now, this last July, this place was flooded with uh, two meters of river water, and it really wrecked a lot of the pavement, and it uh, uh, some of the statuary was was damaged and things like that. And they, what they've done is they've 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 wrapped the the spring, the sacred spring, inside of a like a a plexiglass green that that goes from the top of the rock down to the base of the rock so that so that uh, nothing really can get into the sacred spring but you can still see it it's like looking at it through a window um yeah so i'm going to go back to to saint bernadette Suru. she uh she became a nun okay uh but the waters of the spring that was coming out of the grotto became known for their healing ability. And they have been tested against numerous, numerous ailments. Uh, be, because uh, it's so difficult for the Catholic Church to, to um, accept anything of a paranormal quality that doesn't... Uh, you know uh, uh that isn't harmonizing with uh, with their scripture or their belief system uh it you know they they tend to go along with science with regards to well you know prove that that this is working and and uh you know they're only saying that you know one miracle per year has been happening but I'll tell you what I came in here right off the bat I already I had a I had an ailment. Granted, it wasn't a severe ailment, but it was an ailment. <laughs> I came in and I took the baths, and and uh, that ailment disappeared immediately. Now, I don't know if I have a predisposition to being open to these types of healings. I don't have a medical doctor, you know. I don't have a doctor. I don't have any kind of an MD that is you know, looking at my health or doing anything like this. And so I do depend on the Kundalini totally for my health care. And uh, so maybe that makes a difference. When I went to John of God, I, I received a, 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 a very, very uh, qualified healing from him. And when I came here, uh, the first time I wasn't, I didn't have an ailment, so I didn't receive it, except I did feel that, you know, within the Kundalini context, I felt how things were going. Um, this time I did. I did have an ailment, and it was resolved. And I have to say, I'm very pleased with this. And so the age of miracles has not stopped. It is continuously going. And you who are Kundalini Awakening know that this is the case. Um, hi, Santara. Hello, Chrism. Evidently, you forgot Hi. about the hour hour time change. <laughs> yes, indeed, I did, and apologies for that. And then I, uh, yes, there are other reasons, but that was the main one. Yes. Now, um, did you set up the chat window? Yes, I did, and um, the chat window is up, and um, there are no questions at this time. Very good. Well, I'd like to say hello to everyone on the chat window, and once again, my apologies for not being able to set up a chat window with this iPad. 
Now, now, uh, Centaur, you went to to Lords with me the first time. What was your experience there? Oh, I did. It was a wonderful experience. You know, yeah, it's a place of great devotion, and it's also a place where I suppose many come looking for a miracle. You know, a place of hope. And a place of desperation, too, in many ways. A place where, you know, I think people discover a peace that maybe they didn't have before they came. And um, it's not just Catholics, I think, who go to Lourdes. I think people of many faiths and, and no faiths go there as well. And many go out of curiosity. And others are very devotional to the Mother Mary. Um, for me, there was miracles that happened for myself, Chrism. Um I can remember there were three of us walking towards the grotto and we were walking side by side and we were chatting and then there was this most delicious fragrance of flowers and came to my attention. It was the smell of lilac and we all smelled it at the very same time. But when we looked around, you know, there was no bush, there was no tree, there was no flower of any type of bloom. Yeah. There were no flowers at all. I was one of those three people. No. And I, and I did yeah, smell that right. as well. And, uh, yeah, you're absolutely correct. There was no source for that smell. And that smell is typically a, a kundalini uh, phenomenon. But please continue. Yes, that's right. So, I mean, to me, that was, that was a personal miracle. And another thing is um, the bats themselves. Um, not only just the bats, but the whole, the way that my Kundalini responded to being in Lourdes was a surprise to me because I would have been raised a Catholic and I would have known an awful lot about Lourdes, but I didn't have, you know, what I would consider to be a desire or I had no desire to really go there. But on arriving there, my Kundalini really responded. I felt this so much in my heart and I remember when we went to the baths you know there was an amazing ritual around all of that I don't know have you spoken about this already not yet no about the baths no I have not spoken about that yet okay well just you know I had a beautifully miraculous experience for me in the baths and it was one of intense bliss of heart expansion, of devotion, of it was just absolutely beautiful. Um, so to me, that was a personal miracle, one of absolute connection to the divine, to the divine feminine, to the, the divine within myself and in all things. I'm actually feeling emotional now as I speak about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it's still here. It's still, it's still you know... Yeah. The, the the this source is is active it is it is it is uh it permeates the entire area uh, now since you bring up the bass let's go up and, and let's and, and uh, let's run through uh, what they have you do so typically the queues are very 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 long uh however because of this big flood that they had in july and and uh, you know they're they're having to do a lot of construction work around the area i can only assume that that was the reason why i only had one guy ahead of me uh, when I when I joined in the queue and Magdalene de Deus she she had maybe uh, ten or fifteen women ahead of her. They split up the men and the women, and uh, you know for obvious reasons because they are taking a bath and you don't wear clothing in the bath. Um, so basically, they ask that you be in a very very reverent. Uh, frame of mind as you're as you're sitting on the bench or, you, or you're in the queue, and uh, they ask that that people be silent, and 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 so there's this very very strong uh, sacred feeling as you're as you're standing in the queue or, or you're sitting in the queue. Most of the time you'll be sitting in the queue unless the queue extends beyond the entrance uh, gate, and which it often does. And uh, as as you sit there and you're in, for me, I was in, the, the Kundalini was in contact with me and we were just doing healings all over the place there. It's, a, it's very, very conducive to Kundalini healing. Um, and then as I moved into the, uh, to the inner area of the bath area, they have a big bench on the inside of the building. 
And, uh, you know, they have these blue and white striped curtains that that uh, hide uh, the nine baths, nine baths for women, nine baths for men. Uh, because the population was so low this time, they only had two or th one or two of them working. But uh, as, as you come in, you, you, you undress to your underwear and, and uh, you wait. And then as, the, as one person comes out of the bath, well, then it's your turn. And then you go in and they have you face the wall. You remove your underwear. They wrap you in a white sheet. And then they stand you at the at the top of the stairs before you descend into the bathtub. Now this bathtub is filled with water from the sacred spring. And what you do is you make an intention. So today I went into the baths and and I stood at the uh, at the top of the stairs and I had a wonderful group of of gentlemen who were helping me. Uh, because I don't speak French or Italian or Spanish or any of the other languages. Uh, one guy in, in very broken English was was uh, was attempting to help me anyway. And and you want to make a declaration of of intent before you get into the bath. And I made a my declaration was that any and all who would come to this bath would receive the healing that they're here to receive. And then as soon as I came into, and then you descend the steps and into the, into the very cold water, and, uh, you, you know, I moved straight to the, uh, to the statue of the, uh, of the uh, Immaculate Conception, or what I'll call Shakti Kundalini, and, and, and I said a prayer, gave a kiss on her feet, and then they sat me down, and they kind of swung me back a little bit. And I, so I got the top of my head wet, which was great, which is what I wanted anyway. And uh, they kept me there for just a few seconds, and then they stand you up. Uh, they are very hands-on in how they control your physical position within the, uh, within the bath because of the level of uh, uh, people, people who come here are in, in many ways, in, in very bad shape physically. They, they, some of them can't walk. Some of them can't even get into the baths. And so they're very conscious of your safety as you get into the bath. And so, you know, I had very strong arms holding both of my arms <laughs> anyway. So uh, I stood up, and, and this is the first time out of the six baths that I've had here that they they allowed me to to wash my face and to to bring the water above the head. Some of them don't let you do it because they don't want you to use it as a baptism, uh, you know, because that would go against their faith uh, somehow. Anyway, but these guys, they, they, they offered a, a plastic pitcher, and they said, drink, drink, drink. You know, so I drank of the water right there when I was in the bath. It was a wonderful experience. I, I was allowed to wash my face and the top of my head more, got my hair wet and the whole bit. And uh, it was a extremely blissful. I started getting into bliss, and I I had to be very careful because you know you're you're on these slippery cement steps, but they're holding you. But you know now you're getting dressed because they're they're taking the sheet off of you and they're holding the sheet in front of you to to give you privacy to put your underwear back on, and then uh, you know you're shaking hands with them and you're saying thank you or, or you're saying merci merci beaucoup. And uh, and then I'm going back into the curtained room, and I'm shaking the hands of the guys. <laughs> you know, beware of Kundalini people with bliss because they're very friendly. Um, and then you, and then basically you, you're not allowed to dry the water off of you. Uh, one of the sayings here is that when you get up from the bath, you're already dry. Okay. Because you don't get to dry yourself up. So you're already dry as far as they're concerned. And so you put on your clothing, you know, you put your socks on over your wet feet and so, so forth. And, but you're, the, ex, the ecstatic and the, and the bliss is so strong that you don't care. You want that water to stay on you as long as possible. It's a very, very, very enjoyable experience. And I do recommend it for people coming here. Now, when we and you come out of the bath, it's an extremely refreshing, beautiful experience. But I must say, you have to come 50% of the way. You have to come in there with some very, very good intentions. You have to come in there in you know in a very prayerful and and mindful way. That that you know, just because you're not a Catholic doesn't mean that this won't work for you. As Amelia uh, correctly stated there. 
I, I saw Hindus. I saw I saw Islamic people there, uh, and of course Christians and many many different uh, faiths. I also saw people who are the, kind of the spiritual tourists. You know, people who are who are there to kind of experience everything under the sun that they can, and this is on their list. Uh, so it was a very very positive, beautiful experience. Now that's that's from a five. Uh, sense perspective, a five-body perspective. Now let's go into the Kundalini perspective with this. Uh, there are definite uh, healing entities here. And many of them are brought, not so much by by the, the Immaculate Conception or, or uh, uh, Shakti Kundalini, but by the people themselves. And, it, and the, what, what occurs is that people come and they give themselves permission here to have a healing. So their healing, uh, you know, the, the, the entities that are around them, the healing angels, shall we call them, around them, uh, are given permission to help them. It is a whole, uh, uh, what's the word, it, it, it's, a, it's a huge Agreement among many, many, many different entities of a healing quality, of, and I'm getting purple spots all around me right now, so I can see that uh, they're really resonating with what I'm saying. Uh, it, it's a, it's a, an agreement among many diverse healing entities that allow these miracles to take place. People are being healed at Lourdes right now, just like people are being healed at John of God's in Brazil, just like People are being healed in in uh, in, in uh, New Mexico. Uh, Eileen, I'm going to put you on here. What's the name of the uh, place in New Mexico, Eileen? Yes, I'm here. It's um, Sanctuario de Chamayo. Chamayo, thank you, my dear. Thank you. Okay. Yes, yes. It's the it's the the Chamayo. People are being healed in Chamayo, and once again, you know, in Chamayo. Uh, very similar to to Lords here. You you know it's a big Catholic pilgrimage site in the United States where people will literally walk 60 miles and you know every 12 steps they they're down on their 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 belly and their face <clears throat> praying to the Christ as they you know and then they get up do another 12 paces and then come down. Uh, in 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 Lords here you you have people on the pavement face down on the pavement. Uh, I, you know, I was I was observing this today. It was wonderful. It was beautiful, and this is what I is really giving Lords its power. People come here and give themselves permission to be held, to be healed, and and uh, as Amelia said, you know, it, it is a place of hope, but this hope is is backed up by some 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 very tremendous healing uh, experiences that people can have. Uh, as I mentioned, I I experienced a healing, uh, and uh, Magdalene de Deus also experienced a healing. Although not all the healings are going to be of a physical nature, some of these healings here are going to be of a of a spiritual nature, of an emotional nature, a mental nature. Um, uh, there, when we were walking last night around the circle with the other thousand people. Um, People would come up to Magdalene de Deus and I, and it was typically people that we would call retarded or or mentally handicapped in some way, which I don't agree with those labels at all. But this is all I'm being given to to uh, to to describe them. They come up to Magdalene and I, and they could see our Kundalini, and they would just hug us and want to be with us. And of course, the people that's in charge that are in charge of them would drag them away. <laughs> So hopefully, uh, you know, those folks were able to get a healing, uh, at least for the short time that, that we were in proximity to them. Uh, it's it's really a magical place. Now, the river the river runs right next to it, and, of course, they, they experienced a tremendous flood this past July, and it closed. It closed down Lourdes, which is a very... Uh, it's almost unheard of that that Lords would be closed down, but it was closed down for a certain amount of time, and they 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 worked hard to get it opened back up. Uh, and 
as you're having kundalini and as you're observing and feeling and experiencing, it is very healthy for your kundalini. However, you must you must remain cogent of your kundalini. That this is kundalini. This isn't Catholicism. This isn't really even Christianity. Okay, this is divinity, and it, divinity doesn't really have a favorite faith. Okay, we'll have we'll have characters from 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 uh, religious belief systems such as Buddha or Allah or Jesus or you know any any of the you know you you name the big names Krishna, uh, but divinity doesn't compete with itself. Okay, and so when you come here, you. I, I strongly advise you to recognize that it is Kundalini that is allowing you to experience these things. It is your Kundalini that is bringing uh, these miracles into your presence and, and, and to those around you. It is the Kundalini. It is the Shakti Kundalini, the sacred feminine, that has made her appearance as the Immaculate Conception. And let's go right in. To that whole idea of the immaculate conception. There is nothing else except maybe, a, well, I wouldn't call a test tube baby to be immaculately conceived because the uh, the scientists themselves are not immaculate. But Kundalini is immaculate. And it is conceived within you. You become that Kundalini child. You become that kundalini person, that that rebirth that occurs. And this is the true immaculate conception, in my opinion. This is the kundalini is the only immaculate conception. And uh this is why I feel that the you know that that the that the uh the sacred feminine didn't come right out and say, Oh, you know, I am the Virgin Mary or oh I am Mary Mother of Christ uh, or any of the other Marys that are that are, you know, used within a biblical context. It didn't say that. It could have said that. It could have said that. It could say, Oh yes, I am the Immaculate Conception, I am the Virgin Mary you know. But it didn't. And that begs a question, why did it not? And I feel that it did not because it was not uh, uh, the, the 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 spirit of the Virgin Mary, the spirit of the Mary, the Mother of God. It was not that. It was the Kundalini. It was the divine that is within each and every one of us. And it was, you know, it was bringing uh, uh, a level of of understanding and a level of of inspiration and a level of hope and a level of nurturance and healing to the people at that time that patriarchal organizations typically do not do. Okay? A lot of them are, you know, are about, uh, you know, you know, the masculine, the sacred masculine aspects of life. And this is all good. Sacred masculine is great, but it's just a little bit overused. Uh, and a little bit out of balance with with uh, a lack of sacred femininity, and so this, of course, was brought here, and and this is why it has really taken off. Uh, people love their mother. People love the sacred feminine, feminine, which is the sacred mother. So as this uh, immaculate conception. Uh, presented herself to to uh, Saint Bernadette. Uh, it started a huge level of recognition for sacred femininity in the Western world. And yeah, you, ha- you have to remember, you know, this was in the 1850s and 60s. Uh, uh, Saint Bernadette uh, died in the 1870s. Uh, but if you look at her pictures, you'll see a very similar. Uh, level of this woman was 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 Kundalini active to be sure. Her, just look at her face, and you just look at her eyes. That you can you can see the eyes just want to go up to her third eye. You know the eyes up position. You can see that in her in her uh, pictures that she didn't really like to take a lot of pictures, but but for the ones that you can see her face in, her eyes are going up. You know she's got a lot of. Uh, of sclera showing beneath her 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 um, 
her iris. So, yeah, uh, sacred femininity, the sacred mother, the miracles that are brought forth from lords are brought forth by the sacred feminine, the sacred mother, the sacred kundalini that is awake in many of you that are going to be listening to this. Lords is about sacred feminine. It is about healing. Not just your body, but your mind, your, your principles, your ethics, your mental thoughts, your inner dialogue, your psychology, and yes, indeed, your physical body. Do you have more to add about this, uh, Amelia? No, Chris, I'm not at this time. I'm just listening. I'm remembering it, and, and I'm there again. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Okay. I'm going to put you on hold here. There we are. So I want to invite anyone to call in, uh, and this can be about any kind of aspect of your Kundalini Awakening experience. Uh, the, the phone number is uh, United States Area Code 347-934-0026. That's 347-934-0026. And let's see. Yeah, I would like to say hello to Rosemary, to Eileen. Thank you again, Eileen, for your help. And hello, Rosemary. Um, and if Fashji is listening, I'd like to say hello to Fashji and, and, and Sadvi and, and, and many of the, other, of, of the other people who may or may not be on the chat window that I cannot see. <laughs> well, Julie is there, Chris, and Sasha and, Mich- and Michelle Hi, and Michelle. Tim and Chris is there as well. Chris? K R I S A? Chris Harris. Ah, yes. Chris Harris. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Chris Harris. So, yeah, uh, for those of you who can who can make it out to. to uh, Lords, it is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful experience for Kundalini Awakening people. Um, I I do advise a bit of a distance from the Catholicism that is practiced here, but I don't. That that is not a hard shift, you know. If you're not called towards Catholicism anyway, then it's not. It's you know you just respect. You have to respect the people and their belief system. And not only can you respect it, but you can feel their enthusiasm for it. You can feel the, the vibrancy of their of their faith and the strength of their conviction and and this really lends itself to the to the miraculous that does occur here on a daily basis. Now there's you know they, they I I really refuse to, to get into the whole oh well you know if they're taking a medication, then scientifically, you know, this cannot be considered a miracle because it could have been the medication that cured them. Well, if the medication had cured them, it would have done to a long time before they got to Lourdes. Okay. Uh, I, I, I don't, I, I'm really not buying into the, to the naysayers about miracles happening. I know, I know, I know that the, the Catholic Church wants science to back it up because they don't want to lose any of their power or their control because miracles are basically outside of their power and control, and they don't want that. And then, of course, you have the scientists that are saying, well, you know, if you can't measure it, vivisect it, kill it, you know, or, you know, manipulate it in some way repeatedly, therefore it is not a, a, a you know, it doesn't exist. I don't buy into that at all. And I and, and these people who are here, boy, they have so much hope. They have so much love in their heart. They have so much faith in what what their belief system is giving to them, and and it's very easy to tie into the love here with your kundalini. Your kundalini will will really, as as Santara mentioned, it begins to expand your heart here, and really, it is the heart, in many ways, that is the first chakra. Uh, in many ways, kundalini will start at the heart and then travel down to the because to the Cossacks and, you know, and begin the whole awakening process there. So as your heart expands, so does your love expand. And it can, because you're Kundalini awakening, it'll expand into levels of bliss and, and, and <laughs> sometimes ecstasy, although that can be very, very difficult to, you know, for me, when I'm ecstatic, I just have to, I have to, I'm frozen. I can't move when I'm ecstatic. I have to, 
I'm frozen, and if people are walking behind you, you know, <laughs> it could be a problem. But you will. I did experience bliss here, and, and I, it would be my hope that you would also experience bliss here. Now, uh, Lourdes is about 3,500, maybe 4,000 feet, maybe a little less, in what they call the Midi Pyrenees. Uh, it's not typically the warmest place in France. Um, we're here at the end of the season. Everything here, not everything, but much of what we're <laughs> What you see as far as shops and trinket shops, you get a lot of the, you know, the, uh, you know, buy the Bernadette necklace and, you know, all of this stuff uh, here. There's a lot of commercialism here, but they're all closing in about three days. Um, there, <laughs> the level, you know, these people, I, I would have to just say that they're ready. They're ready to close. They, they've had enough of tourists. <laughs> <laughs> they, they can be a little rude, rude uh, because of that, I'm sure. I used to work in Yosemite, and so I know what it's like to see 3 million visitors in three months. And so I can totally understand where they're coming from. So if they do treat you a little harsh, if you do come to them at this time, uh, you know, in October and, and early November, then, you know, people are going to be a little short. Um, but by and large, the people at the shrine are absolutely gorgeous. And the people who volunteer, you have people that fly in from the United States, from from Scotland, and of course here in France, and from Spain, and from Italy, and, and many of the Catholic countries. They fly in, and they will help you, and they will answer your questions in the language that you speak. Now, there weren't too many English speakers here this time, which is fine, because I, Magdalene de Deo, she could, she could translate for me, except when I was in the bath. Uh, but Everybody, it was it, it, it's such a combination of different kinds of love, but love that is all coalescing around a central theme, and that is of the Kundalini Shakti, Kundalini Sacred Feminine, Immaculate Conception, Virgin Mary, Mother Mary. Call it what you will. Call it whatever you want. It's here. The love is here. It's beautiful. You can partake of it. It will partake of you. It will partake of you. And when you come out of that bath, you you can become a very, very different person. Very, very different person. Um, within a kundalini context, of course, uh, you do want to be giving this type of love and attention to people as much as you can in your life. You don't have to come to Lourdes to give yourself permission. The kundalini has already given you permission to do this. You are a walking, talking lords. Okay? You are lords. You are the immaculate conception. All of you who have kundalini and are listening to this, to this broadcast, you are the immaculate conception. You have the grace already. But it's not yours to keep. It's yours to give. It is yours to give to others. You help those who cannot help themselves. You help people. That's why you have the Kundalini. It's not so that you can go sit up in a cave. Not that that's a bad thing. You know, cave people are fine. Hermits are fine. Many hermits of a Tibetan lineage are doing great things for humanity. They're giving from that locale. So, so really, give in a Lord's way from your Kundalini. I know Centara does this, and I know Eileen does this, and I know Rosemary does this, and I know that that Fasti and 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 all of you who are on, who are listening and have the Kundalini, I know that in some way the Kundalini will compel you to help other people. So be that walking, talking Lord's immaculate conception. It is your choice to have it. Well, actually, you didn't. Many of you did not get to choose to have Kundalini, okay? But it chose you. And so in some way, you were aligned with this happening or it wouldn't have happened. So understand that and recognize that and give from that perspective. Um, these, these waters here are, are very beautiful. They are blessed. The water here is blessed, definitely blessed. Uh, but so can the water around you be similarly blessed. 
All you need do is ask your kundalini to do it. Do it, and it will be done. Ask, and ye shall receive, uh, to quote a Bible saying. Now, I'm going to give the, the phone call-in number again. It's uh, the United States area code 347-934-0026. So do call in if you have any kind of a question about your kundalini awakening experience. Um, You'll see a lot of nuns here. Um, (laughs) They're very helpful, very helpful people. Um, Not treated with the level of sanctity that the priests are treated with, which I always find a bit difficult. But, you know, I I move with that. I forgive that, and I just kind of move with it. This is the patriarchal system here. Um, uh, Let's. Oh, excuse me, Rosemary. Looks like you have a question. I'm going to go ahead and put you on. Here we are, Rosemary. Hello, Rosemary. Hello, Chris. I want to thank you. My heart was so touched. I am a Catholic. I've been a Catholic all my life, and I recognize the things that you're saying. One of the things, a friend of mine has gone to Lourdes years ago, and I was remembering her telling me when she came back. And she has made many travels to Europe and, and to shrines. But when you when you said what you said about our kundalini these last five minutes or so, I just was stopped just just to a halt to say thank you because I, I wanted to be there. I wanted to receive what you received, and I was a little glimmer of sadness and that I haven't, but you just took all that away. <laughs> you have. You've got it. <laughs> yes, are, thank you. You are the Lord's. You are the Minnesota Lord's, my dear. Yes, I will be that. I receive. I, I accept that. And I, and I brought you a little gift from Lords anyway. So there you have oh, it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for saying that. And yes, yes. Uh, lots of nuns here, Rosemary. Lots of nuns, mm-hmm. but they're treated a little bit differently. Uh, but they're very, very sweet, very nice people. I had the opportunity to talk with a few of them, just you know, ask, asking directions here and there. And uh, mm-hmm. very, very, very beautiful, very, very nice and devotional people. So now with regards to you, let's just talk about you. Um, he, you are such a helpful, grace-based person, Rosemary. You're helping little children cross the street. You're helping the homeless. You're giving them jackets and sleeping bags and boots for the for the terrible winters that you have in Minnesota. I mean, you are already a lord. You are a corporeal lord. See, this is this is the kundalini in an active state, and it's this is what happened to Saint Bernadette. She had the kundalini activated mm. within her by the immaculate conception. Mm-hmm. Okay, by the immaculate conception, and I'm gonna I'm getting a little noise, so I'm gonna go ahead and put you on hold. But thank you. That's fine. Thank you. For- thank you. So yeah, see Rosemary and 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 Amelia and 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 Eileen and many 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 other people are 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 representatives of the Kundalini and the Kundalini is here. Lords is a base for the Kundalini. Sure, they're going to call it the Virgin Mary. Sure, okay, fine. Call it whatever you want, but it is Kundalini and it is here and it is waiting for you to come and partake of it. Now, you're not going to, well, I won't say that, but typically, <laughs> I will say, most of the people that come in here won't get a Shakti pot from here, but some will. Some will get a Shakti pot. And, and oh my gosh, what a, what an added blessing that would be. Hopefully, you know what's happening. Uh, hopefully, maybe, maybe they will be, You know, they will be guided towards this broadcast. Looks like Eileen has a question, so I'm going to bring Eileen on. Hello. Uh, Hi, Eileen. Hi. I I didn't have a question. I'm fine. I'm really enjoying your discussion. Oh, very good. (laughs) It's as if I'm actually... Sorry, Eileen. Sorry, this... I have a time delay between when I push the button, because I, I guess because I'm here in Europe or whatever. I, I apologize. I'm going to put you back on and, and, and let you finish what you were saying. What you were saying, Eileen? I, your description 
I feel as if I'm there. I could feel myself at the top of the stairs and in the water and kissing the feet. It's it's um, I'm really enjoying this discussion, Chrism. Oh, wonderful, wonderful! I will continue it and thank you, thank you for that comment and put you, putting you pressing the button now. <laughs> Technology, gotta love it. Okay, so let me give a little bit more of a description then. Uh, you can go right on up to the to the sacred uh, spring, um, and what people do is, is you'll have a long queue once again. Although we didn't have one today, you'll have a long queue, and as you as you face the grotto. Uh, the sacred spring will be on you on the left, and what people do is they they touch the rock, and the rock has becomes uh, worn from so many hands and so many fingers touching the rock, and 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 it's it's, it's it, you know it's become a, a bit uh, it's it's moist from from the there there it isn't just one spring there's like a number of uh, little minor springs that add into the one ring, one spring, and it's coming through the rock, and so it's wet, and so you'll get a layer of moss on there, but the, you'll also get a layer of, of uh, hydrochloric acid that's that's eating into the rock due to so you know, millions and millions and millions of people touching this rock. You go, you go right into the grotto. Right into the grotto, and you go right into where the the Immaculate uh, Conception uh, showed herself 18 times, which is really unique, in my opinion, uh, to uh, to, to uh, Bernadette Subaru at the time to become, you know, later to become Saint uh, Bernadette. Uh, it is a very beautiful experience. Very beautiful experience, and the energy is very, very palpable. And once again, a lot of that energy is fueled by the people themselves, the people coming through. Now you can go up. They they built this beautiful, beautiful chapel. Uh, this is the Lord's Chapel is, is exceptional because they have many domes, uh, large domes that are that are built below the chapel the the typical chapel that you would you would you would recognize as a chapel and so these domes are like the first floor and then you go up uh, some winding staircases and you come into the chapel and of course of course they have some of uh some of St Bernadette there i guess selected uh clippings of St Bernadette's body is there under a uh, Kind of this little mini mini uh, glass mausoleum. I couldn't see the the body parts, so I don't know. I I can't describe to you uh, what body parts were taken or how much. <laughs> Do me a favor. Nobody nobody gets to take any body parts from me. I'll tell you that right now. Okay, I'm gonna. <laughs> Uh, no, no clippings. <laughs> Unless you're going to grow me in a petri dish. Fine. Okay, that's fine. That's different. <laughs> but yeah, they had the uh, relic of uh, Saint Bernadette there. We both went to see the relics. Just, I was going to see, try to see what parts were there, but well, you can't. Um, the chapel is exceptionally beautiful. Uh, the the paintings. On the outside of the chapel, and this this big this big stage with a huge um, audience capacity. Literally, you could fit thousands and thousands of people, and they do. They fit thousands and thousands of people here, and they all are there for love and healing and for expressing their devotion to the divine. It is such a beautiful experience here, folks. And I do I do want to suggest that if you can at all make it to Lourdes, do. Do make it. And take the baths, whether or not you're you know you're you need a healing or not. Take the baths. The baths are a very, very special part of the whole process and they really cement home uh the many levels of healing that can be received here. Um the the call in number is uh, United States area code three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. I will I will have to make this episode a little bit short uh, 
uh, because because uh, people may want to come in here and use this phone, uh, and, and I don't want to I don't want to you know be a, a hog in this little space here, but uh, yeah, do call in if you have any kind of a question or a comment that you'd like to make about Lords or about uh, healing in general. Uh, call in at three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. Don't I didn't see uh, anyone of a of a really maligned disposition. I did see people in pain. I did see irritated people, people who who are various levels of irritation, like our night manager here. Um, that that was was apparent. But, but once again, you just forgive and you move forward. You're not this whole place really turns on forgiveness. This is a beautiful place to initiate forgiveness for yourself, for others. Um, it, it's a very helpful place for you to begin that. If you need a geographic locale to do that, then come to Lords and do that. Go to Chamayo and do that. Go to John of Gods and do that. If you need a, if you need a geographical area to give yourself permission to do so, and, and I can understand how that would be effective for a person. You make a pilgrimage. Pilgrimages have their purpose. You walk or you drive or you, you know, in some way you travel to a certain area for a certain thing. And remember, it's the, it's the journey, not the destination that makes the difference. And so when, as you make your journey to say, Lords, um, I came through well, of course, I came through Ireland, where where Amelia Centara would put the seminar. I'm very, very great, grateful for that. And then over to uh, Geneva, and then from Geneva, Magdalene de Deus uh, met me there, and we went straight away uh, uh, down into France and following the uh, the French Alps for a ways, and then we went straight down into uh, Carcassonne, and then from Carcassonne we went into uh, the Cathar lands, and I did some videos there on the Cathar lands, and then from Cathar land, we went straight into Lourdes, and uh, Lourdes is a is is a wonderful destination to have, but the healing was taking place even before then. You know, I, we <laughs> Mag Magdalene de Deus and I literally walked a kilometer into into the the Pyrenees. There's this huge cave called Nia that uh, that goes in two kilometers. We only walked in about one kilometer. It's a very beautiful place. Very Shakti, once again, a very sacred earth, sacred Shakti, sacred feminine place. And then you come to Lourdes, and it's once again, it is another sacred feminine place. So the sacred feminine is on the rise in this world. It's not being recognized quite yet for what it is, but it is on the rise. And as more people become Kundalini awakened, as more people are able to, to receive the blessings of the Kundalini in a safe way that allows them to, to have it without going into Kundalini syndrome or, or being sucked into to, to, you know, to, to some type of a teaching that is going to be abusive of them. Well then, well then, the sacred feminine will be even more available to people. So I want to encourage this with you. I want to encourage you to recognize that sacred feminine within yourself, the awakened kundalini or the unawakened kundalini. Everybody has it. The difference is whether it's awakened or not or activated or not. And if you're listening to this, Something may be drawing you towards an activation or awakening event, a recognition in you, or maybe a, a loved one has Kundalini, and and uh, you're you're listening to this uh, to give them some help. Well, what isn't that a healing? What a healing you're giving that that loved one, that friend, that family member, giving them some information that they may not have about their condition. You are also a Lourdes, a healing destination. Think about that. And I'm going to sign off early on this one. Uh, tomorrow I'll go in for, for some more
Mag uh, uh, Magdalena Deus. Uh, we'll be doing that again, and we're going to also be doing another march, I think, around the circle there, and uh, and some devotion, and then we will be headed off to to another destination on our pilgrimage here in uh, in France, and then into Spain. And I just want to say that it is such a grace and a pleasure to be able to share this with you. And I am going to thank Santara and her husband John and all her children for making this broadcast <laughs> available to you. Hey, Santara. Thank you, Chris, and thank you so much for this program. It's been, as Eileen said, it's been wonderful to hear it. It's been wonderful to hear your voice and the energy that's in your voice is very beautiful. Uh, I can feel it here. You know, what you were saying about pilgrimages and um, being made, that we can make pilgrimages to sacred places, uh, and I would like to say that we can also, you know, make pilgrimages to sacred events, and I consider that the seminars that you give are sacred events. And so I would like to invite people to consider maybe coming to one of these, to making a pilgrimage to one of the seminars that um, you will be giving next year in 2014. And well, you're right. If you're people absolutely have correct. This, this is a sacred, it is a sacred event because we are dealing directly with the, the Immaculate Conception. This is this is what appeared to Saint Bernadette. When we have a Kundalini awakening seminar, this is exactly what is occurring. This is exactly right. And so, <laughs> you, 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 <laughs> so go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Well, I was going to say that I would like to invite people to consider making a pilgrimage to one of these sacred events. And we're actually beginning to plan these for 2014. And I, I know already that, you know, Rosemary is looking to host one in Minnesota. We're considering one going towards uh, maybe February or March in New York. And there are other areas. So, if people want to write to me and just declare an interest and let me know their location, I will keep them updated. And I can also take into consideration where they are in, in a country. And we're going to be doing one again next year in Ireland as well. So and, and how, please do write to me at Kundalini, ah, good, good. Kundalini good. Matters at gmail.com. And Chris, and we have a caller on the line who has just come on. So will I patch you through? Please. Master C. Ah, Fast G. How are you? <laughs> I am quite well. I I was um, holding off to actually tell of my experience. Uh, I, I just wanted to tell of an inner experience that I had with you uh, just recently. Um, during meditation, I, I alluded to uh, this in the last talk that I had been, uh, I guess, being told something by Shakti, and um, I had been seeing the same images. I, I think I, I mentioned that I'd been seeing uh, images of trees, and um, out of the middle of that, uh, there was uh, the head of a, a snake that morphed into a white tiger. Um, and then the following day, while in, in meditation, um, I saw you, uh, which was the most... I'm going to try not to get emotional here. You can get emotional. It's okay. Don't hold that back. I saw you. Um, and... According to all the teachings, one recognizes his master when when he can see him on the inner. And I saw you very clearly. Of course, you didn't have a gray beard. It was all black <laughs> or whatever color your hair is. But um, it was the most extraordinary experience for me. And I just wanted to, to say that um, it, it, for me, um, uh, 
it 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 told me that I was doing the right thing because you are truly one with divinity, um, especially um, when when thinking of the the prior experiences that I'd been having with Shakti, and I, I just wanted to thank you uh, well, for just being well, you. <laughs> thank you, thank you for 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 relating that experience. It's a very powerful experience, and I want. I want you to to understand the, the the significance of the snake and the tiger, and then and then seeing me. This is this is your Kundalini talking to you, my friend. Are you are you hearing me? I am here. I am here. Okay. I'm here. And and, I uh, and, and and she she is she is talking to you in a way that that is giving you a, a direction, and I feel that you you know. You know what that direction is, and, and uh, absolutely. And I'm going to bring you a little gift from Lords here. <laughs> uh, bless you, bless you, Master. Bless so you. do me a favor, do me a favor, Fashi. Uh, write to me your 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 snail mail address on my Kfire for all at yahoo dot com. Okay. It it would be an honor. Thank you, Master. Yeah, and, and then we'll mail that off to you. All uh, right. I'll get out of the way now. No, mm-hmm. no, 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 no. You're not in my way. You understand that, right? Yes, yes. Don't say yes. that. Don't, don't. Yes. You Bless don't want to phrase things that way. You, you are in a very sacred space. You're in a very sacred space, and there is no possible way that you could be in anybody's way at this point. I mean, you, Fashi, you've been on a long, long, beautiful pilgrimage, and this pilgrimage is, is beginning to bear fruit and. And the fruit that it is bearing for you right now is extreme levels of information that is given to you behind your eyes, but within your inner self. And to see a teacher in your inner self is a huge validation for the choices and the decisions that you've made to get to where you are. Yes, that is the word I was lo- I was looking for, validation, because one can see the master in the dream state but to see him during uh or her during uh a meditative experience is significant as far as i'm ex- uh, i'm concerned absolutely it's, absolutely and, and i want to honor you and i want to i want to i want to say what a special quality and gift that is for you as you develop into the the healer that i feel that you're becoming through the kundalini through your kundalini awakening thank you Okay, and, Thank you and, very much. And I am very honored to to, to be a, in some way of a helpful source of of, uh, of grace for you, my friend. Well, you are, you are most certainly, and thank you. Well, thank you, thank you for calling. All right, so have a safe trip back. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah, a very powerful uh, experience that, that Fashi is relating to us, and I want everyone to take note that that Kundalini does not act accidentally this way. Just as Saint Bernadette was staring at her uh, immaculate conception, at her Kundalini awakening event, and paying attention to it, so is Fashi sharing a very similar event. Understand this, that you are able and capable to have what St. Bernadette experienced. And I, and I say this to a lot of my private students. People who are Kundalini awakening are, are actually saints that are in the making. Whether they're in the training stages or whatever stages saints have to go through... This is what Kundalini Awakening people are. This is what I'm teaching. This is what the safeties are all about. It's turning you into a saint. You know, we just heard from Saint Fasci and Saint Satara, Saint Rosemary, Saint Eileen. It is a saint developing process. It is this. And you are that. 
If you are having a Kundalini awakening event in your life at this time, understand that. And yes, understand that that the old adage may be true that you know the, the a, a saint's life is typically hard, but it doesn't have to be as hard as say it was for Saint Francis of Assisi or Saint Philip of Neri. Okay, you have information that they did not have. They have faith that you may not have. So where we come together here in these in these conversations is the merging of information and faith, and information plus faith equals validation. I want you to validate your Kundalini experiences, just the way Fashji is validating his, just the way a Saint Bernadette uh, Sivaru by following her directions and by listening to to the Shakti Kundalini say to her, do this, do that, do these things and build this church over the sacred spring. So are you also in a divine compact with the with the inner divinity that is happening within you. Just as Saint Francis of Assisi was able to to have such communication with animals, so does a kundalini person have that same communication. Just as, a, as any of the any of the healers that were saints were able to heal, so do you have that capacity. You are all Saint Bernadettes. You are all Saint Francis of Assisi. You are all Saint John of the Cross, Saint Teresa of Avila. You are all these saints. You, you, the Kundalini awakening. You, those who are seeking Kundalini. Please understand this and know this and recognize this within yourself. And then follow the safeties daily. Do them twice daily, but follow the safeties. And validate the saint that you are becoming. Contact me if you ever have questions about your Kundalini Awakening experience. You can do it at, at uh, K Fire for All. That's K as in Kundalini or King or uh, not, not Conundrum. Uh, uh, well, K K and then Fire F I R E and then Four F O R A L L at Yahoo.com. So. You can also reach me on Facebook at uh, Chrisum Kundalini on Facebook, or it'll uh, they, they won't let me use Chrisum on Facebook anymore, so I have to use Chris Mitchell, which is fine. You know, you can reach me at Chris Mitchell on Facebook. You'll recognize my face. I'm the I'm the guy with the sunglasses and the beard. And oh, I think Chrisum has been cut off. So, are you back? Am I back? No, Chrism has. You are back, Chrism. You are. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so so maybe the powers that be here in Lords are saying, get off the phone. So <laughs> everybody, <laughs> Santara, Rosemary, Eileen, Fasci, uh, Kristen Harris, Julie, everybody who is in the in the chat room, and everybody who is listening in the future, I would like to say uh, blessings to you all from Lords France. Uh, I will talk with you again next week. Thank you, Santara. Bye-bye, everyone.